I'm Luca Save from the Italian company D-Blue. D-Blue is a research and consultancy company in, in Italy. And in the diving project, we have the responsibility of evaluating the guidelines that the project is going to produce, the resilience guidelines. So, um, first of all, I would say uh, a contribution to clarify a bit the resilience uh, definition as such. We have, it is a very diverse community, the, the resilience one, so it is difficult to have uh, a common definition. At least for what concerns resilience at an organizational level, we, we try to clarify a bit uh, uh, what you can do with this idea, with this, uh, with this concept. Because, uh, as I said, uh, every community tends to interpret it very differently. And in addition to this, uh, I would say a contribution to expand the traditional concept of risk management. Uh, there are parts uh, of the resilience that are normally not included in risk management. For example, uh, the dimension of business continuity. What happens when you have a crisis, a major accident, and you need to recover quickly to normal operations, also due to economic reasons? This aspect is not normally not really covered in risk management, uh, traditional risk management, uh, as well as the way to change your hierarchy the moment you have a crisis, your uh, uh, command chain. Uh, this is also a, an aspect that normally it is not really covered by risk management that uh, resilience can bring and we, that we are trying to address in Darwin. So until now we are quite happy of the cooperation we could establish uh, among different uh, domains and different organizations coming from uh, uh, yeah, from different sectors. For example, the main ones in, uh, in Darwin are the healthcare sector and the air traffic management aviation sector. Uh, and we succeeded in making them cooperating in the analysis and in the ideas of how to manage crises that they should manage together. For example, uh, an, an aircraft accident uh, outside the airport area is something that calls uh, the a need for uh, uh, actions, very quick actions by uh, the air traffic control uh, by one side, the airport company on the other side, the fire brigade and the healthcare services. So the rescue services for, uh, for all the uh, disease, uh, the, the people uh, that are uh, affected, uh, the people that may die and so all this kind of operation requires a joint management of the crisis by people with very different knowledge and very different backgrounds. And I think the work we have done until now on mixed scenario with an healthcare and aviation component are a quite good achievement so far. Uh, let, let us say the, the ambition of the project would be to try to um, uh, use the, the competencies and, and that, are, that are available uh, around Europe uh, in different countries and uh, the different level of uh, also of uh, understanding of, of resilience, of the way to manage uh, crisis. Uh, we have different components of resilience that are stronger in some countries and, and, and other components that are stronger in other countries. Just to make you an example, uh, in my country, in Italy, is known to be quite good as, uh, as far as the reaction to a crisis is concerned. Unfortunately, we have often uh, earthquakes, you know, and, and it seems that Italy is quite good at mobilizing uh, uh, the population, the volunteers, when a crisis occurs. This uh, could be an example of so-called community resilience. While uh, uh, Sweden, another uh, country which is represented in, in, the, in, the, in the project, is very strong on the uh, preparedness and prevention part. And these are just two examples that, of things that can be combined, of synergies that can be uh, uh, established and uh, exchange of, uh, of, uh, of different uh, cultural background that, can be, that could be beneficial uh, for, for resilience. Yeah.